My name is Emmanuel. I play first the piano, I play accordion, percussion, and I sing. I'm Emma and I play banjo and uh, I sing a bit as well. I am Adriana and I play bouzouki. I'm Jorgos and I play the accordion. I'm uh, Hannaret. I study singing, but I also play the fiddle. Uh, I am Ecke Karel. I study bass, uh, but I also sing. My name is Manuel Rivera and I play the bagpipe. Uh, and I'm Samuel and I play the percussion. My name is Maria and I play the hardanger fiddle. And I'm from Norway. And my name is Yuri and I sing. And I also play this lovely, lovely thing here. We are from Greece. Yes. France. I come from France, but in, uh, in a French island. It's called Reunion Island, next to Mauritius and Madagascar. We're from Estonia. From Estonia. I am from Ortigueira in the north of Galicia. And I'm from Vigo. We're from Norway, both yes. of us. I'm from, yes, the south part. <laughs> and I'm from the west. We was so young. I start um, 12 years old, I think. And I was start at um, 14 years old, yes. I started playing banjo maybe seven years ago now, uh, but uh, my father is in an association of uh, traditional music, so I uh, know it uh, since I was born. Um, I started uh, at the music school when I was four or five years old. I started playing the classical uh, violin, but then I didn't like it at all, and then I decided to uh, start uh, singing a little bit and then I kind of <coughs> found my way to folk music. Yeah, I also started early. My mother is a music teacher. So I started singing and, and doing whatever. And when I went to school, I went to music school as well. Then I started playing the Estonian zither, uh, kannel. And uh, there I moved to different instruments because none, none, none of them stuck uh, with me. I started when I was six years old to play the violin and then I went on to playing the hardanger fiddle and more folk music after that. I began music with, uh, when uh, I was six years old and uh, before I uh, begin with classical music. Then I uh, begin with uh, traditional music I started to play music with six years, but I started with percussion and now I changed to bagpipe. I started at 15 years old. Uh, at the beginning I played the drums and I changed to classical percussion. Yes, I have always been singing a lot and dancing, a lot of folk dance. Uh, just in my family we do it a lot, so I think I've just been doing it always. Both. Both. We can do both. We can buy a score and buy a... Mm, at Buzuki, because it's a, a traditional instrument, we play more with the ear. But now, in our studies, we are learning to read the scores. By, By ear. <laughs> in the traditional music, it's more typical to learn by hearing it but here in the conservatory we learn with scores. By here? By here. Only by here. The modern uh, pieces I learn it by score and traditional by ear. By ear. Mostly by ear. Yeah. Yes and no. Uh, the accordion is a global uh, instrument, so we have a big repertoire. <coughs> Yeah, of course. In the in the class of bagpipe, uh, we play a lot of traditional pieces of Galicia. Uh, in percussion, it's more modern pieces. Yeah. We have only Greek music because you know it's a Greek uh, uh, instrument, so Greek music only. And sometimes uh, for lesson, we play something like uh, Paganini to for exercise. 
I mostly play from the villages in, in the south of the country and mostly from Telemark, where I study now. <coughs> when I sing, I mostly sing from, from Voss, from the area I'm from. But uh, when I play the Hardanger fiddle, I just uh, learn whatever I can learn from wherever. Yeah, we, I play uh, most my, mostly my uh, repertoire from my region, but I also play jazz, uh, actual music, and uh, music from other countries, for example, Latin music. I try to uh, learn songs from my region and like focus on my region, uh, which is uh, Varu. So it's in the South Estonia because we have a separate language uh, there or used to have. Um, I'm trying to kind of preserve that. It's an interesting project. You can know other cultures and other... Uh, and you can understand uh, by, the, the, by their music a lot of things. Uh, it's good because uh, it's everything about communication and uh, it helps you to experience new things, you can see the common ornaments or common, uh, you know, phrases uh, you have, uh, for example, in uh, Greek traditional music to Norwegian. It's uh, amazing. We can understand how close or how far yes, we are. Yes. I think that's the point. Yes. I think it connects um, very different cultures, and it's really. Um, it gives us insight as to like how other people have lived and what are the similarities between uh, all our cultures, which is really nice to see. Mm. Yeah, same. I, I think uh, uh, the way it connects and uh, when other people from different, different cultures can like share their music, it enriches uh, uh, our repertoire. It's very important to change our tradition with the traditions of the other countries, so we now can improve in our, our own music. Uh, I think it's important because the traditional music doesn't die and keeps, keeps moving. It's um, very nice to just meet other people that, uh, that uh, also does traditional music and also is it makes uh, at least me realize that uh, this community that maybe seem quite small and little is actually quite big and it's uh, the things that we do that we say oh this is traditional and not a lot that also this is how other people also can kind of uh, do their music like oh yeah this is also traditional here or it's interesting to see the similarities between the countries because even though the music can be a little different, it's still some same thoughts and principles. Yeah. It's uh, really cool to get related with other country. For example, example my personal example, I went in Erasmus in Estonia to study the music of this country. And it was a really, really interesting experience. It's, it's, it's interesting to see what are the differences, but also what are uh, the similarities and, uh, what, uh, and it helps us to know well what is a traditional music all around, all around, all around the world and uh, it's good for creativity. I love to learn new tunes from different countries that were really nice and uh, to discover new music because when you, if you search for yourself on the internet you don't get the best pieces so it's nice to, uh, to talk with someone who knows the music who can give you tips and tricks and also in Norway we play a lot uh, solo and not in groups so in our school we play in mixed ensembles like here but it has been good to uh, get new techniques and other people have other ideas of how to how you can arrange a tune. I think mm, it kind of opened up my um, 
way of looking at my instruments, like both my voice and and, and also uh, seeing the Calithian uh, percussions and singing. It was really like, wow, like you can use everything as an instrument if you want it to be, and, you know, and it's uh, to be, have more fun with the way we sing and the way we play music. Uh, we learn a lot of things and a lot of new songs and we also are having fun learning it. Mm, new ways to play the scores and things like that. We met new friends and uh, learned some new tunes which, uh, doesn't, which don't sound uh, like uh, what we usually play. We learn to make some adaptation with the other and uh, uh, we learn to communicate with people which uh, don't speak our uh, language and so but we, we can do it because music is an universal language. Absolutely work like a bridge. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I won't go with this. <laughs> <laughs> Personally, as a as a bassist, uh, it's important for me to like embrace the rhythm and be with it. And uh, uh, here, every every song, every tune is very rhythmical, and it's uh, it's uh, enriching my playing. One, two, three, octopus. <laughs> <laughs> I like to see that a normal place where I study every day is now converted um, in, the, in the main point of the traditional music in Europe. Um, I like the we see a lot of things that we don't see usually here in Vigo and that uh, probably next week uh, we're not going to keep seeing it. Well, it's definitely warmer here. <laughs> it has been really nice to meet all these uh, great people from uh, different parts of uh, Europe, getting to know each other also, not just with the music, but also just as persons. I like very much uh, the cathedrals, uh, your, your uh, conservatorio. conservatorio as well. Well, I like it working. Very much. Yes, yes. The organization, the, we can say anything bad about all of this. And how, how much friendly yes, the, yes, yes. are the people here? Yes. And in similar to Greek, uh, you know, it's uh, very beautiful. I think us as a group of the Estonians as well, I think we also grew um, way uh, more closer. Yeah. yeah. As, as a group and as friends, which is really cool because we're like far away. And I think seeing uh, seeing uh, all this uh, um, these different types of music and how people approach music as well, it's uh, it's really uh, it's been really interesting, and really mm -hmm. um, eye opening. Uh, in Vigo, there is a lot of percussion, and uh, uh, it's uh, uh, in this uh, part of the world, percussion is uh, important for the dance. I really like the bagpipes and also the Galician dance. And what is really impressive is that uh, a traditional students know a lot of different instruments usually. Yes, yes. obviously we're really happy here. So. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, obviously. We get really in a good mood uh, playing together with people. Learning a lot of nice tunes. Yes, definitely. Of course. Yeah, it's great. Hope great. everyone uh, gets the opportunity to do it. Obviously, uh, if I can, I want to go to other travels. Yeah, I recommend it to everyone. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Claire. Go in June. <laughs> ah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm 
a little bit romantic, sorry. <laughs> Uno, dos, tres. Vino la cigüeña con su mantillina, síganse las bodas que yo seré madrina. Ay, la 